excited that you have joined in the Great Evergreen broadcast on today. Certainly delighted that you're here with us. Come and join us every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. in our morning worship service. Also Tuesday evenings in our weekly Bible study for 7 p.m. Here at Greater Evergreen, 2243 Cluid Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70117. Now let's dive into the service at hand. Father, keep us right now, hold us right now, bless us right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The people of God said, Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Look at him and say, Who is? Who is? Who? Who? All righty. Right. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to show them your 32s, your 10s, or your twos. Look at them dead in the face and say, Neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Who, is? Who is? Who? Who? Uh, uh, my brothers and my sisters, I, I have to keep it real with you and tell you uh, that everybody that comes together on Sunday morning uh, uh, and they call out the name of Jesus is really not the church. Uh, everybody, they might, there are some people, they might have a steeple on the top of the building, but can I be truthful and honest with you, uh, they won't be able or they still won't be able to call themselves the church. Uh, and the reason why uh, there are so many places that won't be able to call themselves the house of the God, house of God, is because they may like look like God's business, but they ain't doing God's business. Yeah. Yeah, uh, they, they might be able uh, to strike up a song. Uh, they might be able to wave their hands. They might uh, be able to shout their troubles over. But can I tell you uh, and, and let you know that if you are going to call yourself the body of Christ, the church of the living Savior, a devout believer in Jesus Christ, then you ought to be doing the work of the Savior. Yeah. Uh, and the Bible declares that uh, if we're going to be doing his work, that means that we ought to be telling a dying world that Jesus still lives. Yeah, I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters, but I found out uh, that there are people outside of these four walls uh, that still need uh, a savior. Uh, matter of fact, you put on your good dress this morning. You tied up your tie, put on your good suit, uh, uh, went in your closet, put on your best duds, walked out the door, and you forgot somebody who needed the Savior right on your sofa. Uh, I cannot be truthful and honest with you that as you got in your car, drove down the street, uh, understand you passed up somebody that might have had a bottle in their hand, uh, but they still uh, needed the Savior. Uh, uh, and the Bible declares to us that, uh, that we must understand that uh, God calls us, he saved us to be a blessing uh, and to show him to somebody else. Uh, uh, but we have an issue because it is in the body of Christ that once uh, some of us got saved, we forgot about everybody else that were on the outside uh, that needed Jesus to come in their life. Uh, uh, but there ought to be about five folk in here that can look back over their life and say, I know somebody in my life uh, that needs an encounter with the Lord. And I made up in my mind uh, that I'm going to do everything I can to usher them into the presence of Jesus. I, I don't know about you, uh, but I want everybody around me to experience the Jesus, the God I serve. Uh, uh, because I found out uh, when they get a little bit of taste of Jesus, when they get a little bit of walk with Jesus, I found out uh, that everybody around me, their lives got a little bit better. And so Jesus uh, declares in our text on this morning, he, he tells us, whosoever will, let him come. Uh, uh, it is easy, it is easy uh, for each and every one of us to say, whosoever will, uh, but in order for us to be able or really uh, actively apply whosoever, we have to understand and know whosoever for ourselves. Uh, <laughs> because the problem with a lot of us 
uh, we believe that whosoever is like we are now. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me right there. Uh, see, uh, we want people around us that look like us now. Uh, 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 we believe that's whosoever. So uh, we only want to mess with folk that look like us, act like us, sound like us, do what we do when we do it. But can I tell you, whosoever ain't about who you are now, uh, but whosoever is about where you came from. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't gonna. Whosoever is about where you used to be. And the problem with a whole lot of folk in the house of the Lord is they forgot about where the Lord has brought them from. Yeah, yeah, L listen to me. Some of y'all, you act like you ain't been there and you act like you ain't done that. But can I tell you, all of us got a past in our lives. Uh, truthfully honest, right now, uh, if if uh, some of us in here will find out the past, some of us will get up and run out of the church because we don't want to be around those folk. But can I tell you, you used to be one of those folk. Yeah, you used to act like one of those folk. Look, uh, he is I and I am him. He, we all have a past. We all have been somewhere. We all had some struggle, stress, and strife in our life. And I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters, but we ought to be able every now and then uh, to take a gander and a look from where we came from uh, and know that we have somebody that's in our past that still needs Jesus. Uh, uh, my brothers and my sister, the text on this morning here, John of the Isle of Patmos, uh, he now uh, uh, is talking or uh, hearing from the Lord. Uh, he comes to this word. He comes to this verse. Uh, he says, uh, "Understand." He says, "Hear." He says, "Whosoever." He says, uh, "Whoever he is, let him let him hear." He says, "Let him come." Yeah, yeah. But, but listen. If they're going to hear, then somebody got to be willing to tell them. <clears throat> you you got to be willing, my brother and my sister, you got to be willing to open your mouth and tell somebody about Jesus. <clears throat> you say, well, pastor, you know, I... I, I don't know the Bible like you do. I don't know uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels. I don't know uh, John, uh, who talks about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. I don't know uh, the history, uh, the Acts of the Apostles. I don't know the Pauline the Epistles, Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know uh, the general epistles. I don't know any anything about uh, this book called Revelations, this apocalyptic book. But can I tell you, uh, you don't have to tell them about what went on in the Bible. You, But can I tell you, uh, you ought to be able to tell them about what God has already done in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody, anybody in here can testify that I have something I can tell somebody about I can tell them how the Lord has brought me out and made a way for me over and over, over again. Uh, you ought to be able uh, every now and then to open your mouth and tell somebody about where the Lord has brought you from. Uh, you ought to be able to tell somebody about your past. What, what, what do you mean, some of y'all, that sounds foreign to y'all? <laughs> My past. Can, can I be truthful and honest with you that as a believer, you ought to be happy to tell folk where you came from. You, you ought to be able to tell somebody about where you used to be. Don't, don't be ashamed of your past. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. When people bring up your past and they talk about where you used to be and what you used to do, you ought to be able to wave your hand, lift your hand and say, yes, that used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I used to be bent over at the bar in the club. I, I used to be running from place to place all night long. That that used to be me. But 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 somebody in the house, you can shout, Lord, I just want to thank you because that's where he brought you from. Anybody can say, I'm so glad uh, when I look at my life, that's what I used to.
to do. I, I don't have to do it no more. And, and listen to me. You ought to be able to shout thank you because uh, uh, understand he, not only did he uh, bring you out of it, but he took the taste right out of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look, when I, when I think about it now, uh, uh, my nose turns up at it. Something goes wrong inside of me. Uh, I don't even remember. Uh, but I understand that the Lord has brought me a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. He says, he says, he that has an ear, he says, let him hear. He, he says, let him come. Says the bride says, "Come, yeah. Let, let, let me help you out, my brother, my brothers and my sisters." You say, uh, "The bride says, come. Listen, uh, Jesus is the groom. The church, the church is the bride." Yeah, Says, uh, "If anybody ought to have a voice, the church ought to be able." to taste something. Listen, after all the Lord has done for you, you you ought to be able to open your mouth and tell somebody what the Lord has done. But can I be truthful and honest? We are too quiet about the Lord. We, we are too passive about the Lord. We, we are too timid about the Lord. We, we don't get, we don't want to yell. We don't want to scream. We want to get all pretty and sedated about the Lord. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that the Lord has done for me, uh, my timidness, my shyness, uh, everything goes out the window. Uh, and I got to open my mouth and scream with a loud voice. Uh, and tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Do I have about 10 folk in here right now? You can stand to your feet and say, I got something to say about what the Lord has done in my life. If anybody can say he picked me up when I was down, he, he wiped tears from my eyes. He paid unpaid bills. He opened closed doors. Is there anybody that can testify and say, me. Yeah, yeah. He, he says you ought to be able to open, open your mouth. He says, he says, let him hear. He says, but not only let him hear, he says, uh, but there ought to be somebody, he says, whoever is a thirst. Oh, y'all. Y'all. See, See, you know what it is to be thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> see, uh, see, there's thirst in the literal sense. And there's thirsty in the figurative sense. Yeah. 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 But, but they all mean the same thing. Yeah. 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 See, to be thirsty means that you need something in your life. I, 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 I need it in my life. I focus on it in my life. I, I, I put, it, put it all, I put everything aside to focus on it. I'm thirsty. You know, you know what it is. Oh, when somebody want to be all in your business, want to know all about you, Curtis, oh, we call them a little bit thirsty. That, that's what we say. Oh, 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 understand when, when, they, when they spend all of their time focused on your business, and not enough time focused on their own business. Uh, we call them a little bit thirsty. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, you can apply that right here because he says uh, somebody ought to get thirsty about my business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he says, he says, whoever wants to find out about what I do, he says, let them come to me. Let them knock on my door. He says, and I tell them all about me. And, and can I testify? tell you that one day I had to knock on the door and ever since I knocked on the door I ain't never had to thirst again yeah yeah I, I didn't have to worry because I found out what his business is his business is supplying all of my needs his business is making sure that he's a hands of protection all around me his business is making sure 
thirsty. I ain't thirsty. I ain't thirsty. Yeah. I ain't thirsty. I got a drink and I ain't never been thirsty again. Yeah. Yeah. He says, oh, what are you drinking off of? He says, oh, you, you, you got your uh, a little water. Y'all, y'all remember, y'all remember that conversation? In John chapter 4 with the Samaritan. Y'all remember that conversation? Uh, when they walked over to the well and Jesus asked her, said, baby, can you give me some water? <laughs> she looked at Jesus, knowing who Jesus was, and said, uh, you understand that Samaritans and Jews really don't mix. They, they, don't, they don't get along. They don't hang out together. They, you know, uh, y'all stay on y'all side. Y'all stay on y'all mountain, and we stay on our mountain. He, uh, Jesus said, hold on, baby, you're tripping a little bit. He said, I thought you knew you was talking to, but let me help you out. He says, understand, I know everything about you. He, he says, I didn't have to talk to you to know about you. I knew you before I even seen you. Uh, he says, but to help you out, he says, understand, he says, uh, you have five husbands, and the one you with right now, it ain't even yours. He, 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 says, he says, listen, I'm trying to help you out. He says, uh, but you've been hanging around or messing with the wrong men. That, 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 that's what Jesus Jesus told her, you've been messing with the wrong men uh, because you've been looking for them men to do something they can't do. Uh, uh, you're looking for these men to fill a void that can't be a field. Uh, he, he said, stop looking for them to fill a void. Uh, and he says, come looking for me. He says, because when you get a, a drink of my water, he said, I asked you for water, but if I give you the water I have, uh, you will never thirst again. Uh, and, and I don't know about you, uh, but I'm so glad I got Jesus in my life. He says, Jesus says, whosoever will, let him come. This word, this word, whosoever, whosoever, uh, it does not pronounce a declarative name. It does not uh, say uh, or put a qualification on it. What it uh, lets me know is that it is an invitation to each and every one of us. What it simply means is that you should not be able to put a qualification or restrictions on who wants to see Jesus. Uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, that's the problem with a whole lot of us is we want to uh, put qualifications on who gets an invitation to Jesus' party. Uh, uh, but can I tell you that everybody around me is invited to Jesus. Uh, uh, matter of fact, uh, they invited to Jesus when I walk in the room because I bring Jesus with me wherever I go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about y'all. Uh, can I be truthful and honest with you? Uh, uh, even on my job, I gotta bring Jesus with me. Yeah, yeah. And can I tell you the reason why I bring Jesus with me? Everybody might not say it. Everybody might not sound like it. But can I tell you, everybody realized that there's something on the inside. Uh, uh, as Pastor Gaines of the Little Zion and the Mormon Star Baptist Church would always say, he's something that's something holding the reins. Uh, uh, there's something keeping me in. There, there's something surrounding me, holding me back. And, and somebody recognizes uh, that I have Jesus in my life. Uh, can, can I tell you that whosoever uh, looks at you and reads your life and find out that you are the only Jesus uh, that they will ever see. Uh, and so you got to be willing to show Jesus wherever you go. Listen to me. Uh, 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 if you're going to meet whosoever, you got to go to whosoever place. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing right there. Come on, come on. If you are going to, if you are going to meet whosoever, then you have to be able to go to some whosoever place. Yeah. Yeah. problem with us, we act like we've been saved and we act like uh, uh, we scared to show up in some whosoever places, but but can I need to I need to tell you that if you're going to get whosoever out of whosoever, then you need to go to whosoever. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, the problem is we want them to come to us when we should be going to them. The Bible declares he didn't just tell them to come, but he told us that we have to go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got to get outside of these four walls. We got to get outside of our comfort zone. Uh, we got to get outside of our satisfactory sensations. Uh, and we got to go out there uh, and let somebody know that Jesus really lives. And can I tell you, don't just tell them about Jesus, uh, but show them. A lot of us right now, we got a whole lot of folk. Uh, uh, they saying, you know, we want to offer them Jesus, and they saying they're hungry, and then we say the Lord to fix it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. We got a whole lot of folk in our community. They're in trouble, and then all we want to do is pray for them. But can I tell you uh, that God made you the blessing to somebody else? Uh, and, and so therefore, uh, if they need food, he says you ought to be the one to feed them. If, if they in trouble, you ought to be the one to help them out. He says, I created you for my purpose. Uh, and so therefore, uh, stop calling me when I already told you to do it. Oh. Y'all know how we do in the Lord's house. We get up at altar time and we call on the Lord and we ask the Lord to go everywhere he already told us to go. Yeah, yeah. tell him, Lord, go to the hospital. Well, he told you to go to the hospital a long time ago. Go to the jailhouse. He told you to go to the jailhouse a long time ago. Stop sending God where he already told you to go. He told you to get up and go out and tell somebody about the goodness, the goodness, the goodness of the Lord. He, he, he says, whosoever we, yeah. let him take of the water of life freely. I, I, I don't know about y'all, uh, but that makes me shout. He, he says, uh, uh, you can get a drink and it don't even cost you nothing. I, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone. Uh, uh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it again. Uh, what he said, Jesus said right here, is that you can get a drink of water and it ain't going to cost you nothing. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I found out uh, that there is nothing on this side of life that is free but salvation. Uh, uh, everything on this side will cost you something. Uh, uh, but I don't know about you, uh, but when I look at whosoever, when I look uh, down my street and I see whosoever hanging out on the corner, huh? and, and when I look at whosoever uh, uh, doing any and everything, I realize uh, uh, that I have to make the sacrifice. Yeah. What that simply means is that I've got to be able to get off my hind part, off of my gluteus maximus, and I've got to be able to get out there and help somebody. I'll bring the song back up because the song simply says, if I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. And so, really, Evergreen, you ought to be willing uh, to get out of your comfort zone uh, and go out there and say, uh, I'm going to do my best to show Jesus to everybody I mean uh, what you mean what you mean preacher? it simply means that as you are going about your day uh, you ought to be able to tap somebody on the shoulder and let them know that the Lord will make a way uh, you ought to you ought to be able to let that person know uh, that strung out on drugs uh, that God will deliver. Uh, is there any, anybody, anybody in the house right now who can really lift their hands and say uh, that I know the Lord can make the way? Well, how do you know the Lord can make the way for you? Because when I look back at what the Lord has already done, I found out that the Lord can do anything but fail. I'm about to go to my seat, yo, but I got a story that I got to tell. Uh, 
Uh, uh, can I tell somebody, can I tell y'all about Bosco? Uh, Bosco only had about 14 in his mouth. Uh, Bosco came to the church. He was all outdoors. And don't you know, Bosco came into the Lord's house. Uh, uh, the Lord worked on Bosco. standing at the door. Uh, he would smile at everybody he meet. Uh, he would tell them welcome into the house of the Lord. Uh, well, it was one eight o'clock service early in the morning. Uh, uh, there was a lady that came through the door while I was preaching, y'all. Uh, I was doing the best I can. Uh, she stood at the door uh, and she looked Bosco up and down. Uh, I saw why was preaching. Uh, she looked Bosco from his head to his toes. Uh, looked dead at Bosco. Uh, I told you I was preaching hard as I can. Uh, don't you know? I got finished preaching. I got ready to open the doors of the church. Uh, before I could say, uh, whosoever will, let him come. Uh, she came running down the center aisle. Uh, and she said, Uh, she looked back at the back door. Uh, she pointed at Bosco. Uh, she said, I know where the Lord has brought him from. If you'd like a copy of today's message from the Greater Evergreen Baptist Church at 2243 Cluid Street, call us today at 504-949-5053. That's 504-949-5053. For better efficiency, please know the name of today's message.